has been a long, long time. Oh my goodness. Time flies, right? Thanks, Cindy. Woohoo! Teamwork makes the dream work, right? We just have a few fun things to talk about today. I don't want to give up. Here she is. <laughs> Ain't gonna block us today, right? Yeah, we made it. I wasn't giving up. Oh, her. goodness. This isn't a freaking learning process, but I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, so I had to just remove you completely from Zessa's page as any person. So you could come on as yourself and we'll, we'll work out the kinks okay. later. Facebook learning, living through you. <laughs> All right. How is it out there in DC? It's good. It's chilly. It's in the thirties. Um, but no snow into the ground here. So that's nice. How's your day going? Pretty good. I did a, um, I washed my hair in freezing cold water. So that was an experience, but you know, I had to really back to gratitude and figure out the silver <laughs> lining and you know, what first world problems, right? To wake up to no hot water, but still have water running. So I just tucked <laughs> it out and I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm ready to go. So on that note, what is gratitude? <laughs> oh my gosh. It is definitely complex. Yeah. It comes with ridiculous amounts of nuances and it's not as this warm fuzzy feeling that we think that it necessarily is it is um at times it can come with like responsibility and it can come with a little bit of obligation that may not feel so good um so gratitude i think at its core is really humility it's being humble and recognizing that whatever this thing is that you are given or you receive this gift or this opportunity it came from outside of yourself. Now you may have done some things to kind of quote unquote, earn it to a degree, mm -hmm. but really the humility part is stepping back and realizing that it took someone else, it took someone else's effort. It took someone else's giving, um, and perhaps their time to allow you to experience this gift, to have this opportunity. So it's stepping back from this me, I earned this. I worked so hard. I deserve this to wow this person really gave me an opportunity that otherwise I wouldn't have had, regardless of my skill set and regardless of who I am. Um, it's really something coming from outside. So it's acknowledging, being humili hu humble, and also it comes with a sense of responsibility. You kind of have this feeling to pay it forward, to pay it back, either to the giver or to well, someone else. So it's kind of this reciprocal yeah, interconnectedness. Thing. That's what I was going to say, this reciprocal interconnectedness with society and with our friends and our family and our communities um and and relying on each other um in a way that is like you said reciprocal give and take um yeah stuff like that but you know um we've also shown that gratitude does a lot to our brains and it has yeah. an immense effect on our bodies um through our brains you know yeah. um, specifically it 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 you know going back to that humility and stuff but you know, it fires, it fires, I don't know if you've heard this quote, um, neurons that fire together, wire together. Have you heard that? I don't know if you remember. From yes. Um, but it really fires and wires these neurons and specifically in the bliss center of our brain. So it makes us happy. So the practicing gratitude makes us happy um, in, in our, you know. So you're saying mm -hmm. that if we kind of cultivate this attitude of gratitude, like we kind of practice it that our brain's gonna start eliciting these happy hormones and then it's kind of like a spiral is effect a that we just kinda, it kinda goes out of control. And that makes that sense. dopamine and that serotonin that we you know, keep hearing about, um, it secretes those happy hormones. And we see an effect on our bodies and or in our minds and our um, relationships in return. So there's a, there's a physiological, you know, psychological side to it where we feel happier and then there's a physiological side to it where we actually, maybe we sleep better um, there's some side effects that we see. I think um, people that are more grateful even exercise more, so they move around more. Um, and then the third piece is a society piece that we were talking about, the interconnectedness, the humbleness with society, the connection, the recipro reciprocity. Um, you know, and there's something to say about that connection. Yeah, so what about like in, 
our times right now, COVID. It's wreaking havoc on the world. We've had upheaval on the political world. I mean, just so much, you know, for lack of a better word, turmoil that we've experienced. Um, you know, and if we already kind of have like a negative mindset or say we're a little bit pessimistic or we're prone to anxiety and depression, um, how do you, can you be grateful? I guess is the question. You know, a lot of people are like, well, this is happening to me, this and then, and then, my, um, unfortunately, my uncle, uh, my aunt and uncle, they live in Tennessee. And yesterday he went outside to start the car, ran inside to get his cup of coffee. Guess what? Came outside. What? Car gone. gone. Someone stole it. Must have been watching him. Went inside for his hot coffee. You know, and he's sitting here like, my car's gone. Paid off, 50,000 miles, pristine condition. No car. Be <laughs> and, you know, when when something like that happens, how in the heck can you find gratitude? What, what, what are you, are you grateful that your car got stolen? You know, and, and I think that that's not gratitude. Gratitude isn't just this happy-go-lucky feeling like, oh, I'm happy and I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my car got stolen. I'm grateful that I lost that job. I'm grateful my spouse left me or, or what have you. You know, it's actually the grateful person they're able to have, I guess it's kind of a resiliency, right? Where they're able to accept the good and the bad. So it's not that positive feeling. It's not just warm fuzziness. It's actually taking the situation in mm -hmm. as a whole. And even at the time, you may not see the silver lining. You may not understand what's going on, but that grateful attitude. And when you practice it, you start to realize that even though I don't know right now what that silver lining is, I do know that there is one. And that kind of can get you through yeah. that hump of devastation or despair. And I think, you know, a lot of people are suffering and, and going through some challenging times and they're just like, oh, this gratitude stuff. It's just some positive okay. thinking. And in, a, in reality, yeah. it's not. It is accepting the good and the bad and the ugly along with yeah. the beautiful. So we talked a little bit about what gratitude is. We talked about the effects on the body. So how do we actually practice it? Let's talk about that. I think there's something very special about the day in the in the day out of practicing and then that going back to firing those neurons in the brain um, and making it kind of a habit and those neurons keep firing and all of a sudden you're thinking po more positively about life um, that maybe you you weren't necessarily prone to prior to the practice so yeah. we, I think we have a couple ideas on how to practice gratitude um, we've been working on it this year definitely that was our kind of our goal this year to concentrate on the topic of gratitude and satiate ourselves in that topic um yeah so actually let's go with the first the first way too okay i you know i think like you can journal you can write down all the things that you're happy for you're grateful for in the morning and you know you and i we've already admitted that we're not the journal <laughs> folks so what is your favorite gratitude practice if you will right yeah. what is so it? um this year i have to say you know practicing gratitude for me, it was, it was, it was difficult before this year to really understand what it was. And, you know, you and I have kind of really saturated ourselves with the, with the idea and the concept and the studies and what it means and what it does to the body. Um, but so for me, it's, for me, it's like, I'm, I, the way I learn is through a pencil and a pen. And that's just how my brain works. And so it's always worked. I have to write down in order to remember. Um, and so for me, it's the practice of writing. Now, I'm not a journaler. I'm not going to sit and write an essay about what happened today on, you know, in my day. But I think like the gratitude jar, there's something about the gratitude jar, and Ashley's going to show you it in a second, is um, kind of this jar that has these little notes inside of it. You can find it on Zessa's website. And each note, it's either a quote or a question about what, there's one. Um, what am I grateful today? I, I may be grateful for, oh, that's backwards. <laughs> oh, it does show up backwards. <laughs> it says today I'm grateful. Today I'm for. grateful for, and then you take your pen and you write it down about what you're grateful for today. Um, and there's, you know, there's something about that practicing and then it kind of fires back into your brain and creates these pathways that weren't necessarily there before. Um, there's a quote. What's that quote say? Oh, this is a good one. It's by Dennis Waitley. And he says, happiness cannot be traveled to, owned, earned, worn, or consumed. 
Happiness is the spiritual experience of living every moment with love, grace, and gratitude. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, um, and that's what we have shown that gratitude does lead to happiness. Um, happier people actually take a moment in their daily life, like the gratitude jar, and practice. And take a moment in their day and say, what am I grateful for? Like, what, what should I be happy for that's in my life right now? Um, you know, and, and taking a moment to just sit and pause and, and be there and recognize it. Um, maybe right. So do you just keep this on your counter and, and daily kind of pull one mm -hmm. out? And Yeah, so this year for some holiday gifts, I made a bunch of gratitude jars and um, mailed them out to friends and family. And, you know, I, I hope that if it's sitting on the kitchen table, you know, that others are, others are, you know, participating, they're taking, they're getting involved. It's like creating an energy and an environment in the room um, where people are starting to become more grateful about what they have. And, you know, recognizing the smaller things, like I, I am lucky for X, Y, and Z, you know. Yeah. And then maybe when you're having a time where you're down and you've got a few of these that you've already written on, you can go back and revisit, kind of remind yourself of, you know, I may not have hot water today, but at least I have water. <laughs> You know, and sometimes it is thinking of like, okay, this is not a good situation. I'm not happy about it, but what can I reframe? What can I look at it in the positive light and, and be grateful for? So I love this gratitude chart. No, what you just said, reframing your thoughts, it helps reframe your thoughts and kind of take a different perspective on what's happening in your life, whether it's good or bad. But there are other ways that we can practice gratitude. The gratitude jar is just one of them. Um, there's also a letter um, that's super powerful. Um, I think, you know, I do have, so if you go to our website, this is kind of long, I'm not gonna read it all, um, but it's a preliminary exercise and, and it's called the gratitude letter or visit. And this is something that you can actually, you know, ruminate on, brainstorm, think about for, for a while. Um, the gratitude letter is known to be one of the um, most beneficial in terms of boosting happiness, not only for you, but the person that you've written the letter to. And this can be an email and, and the second part of it, right, you can write the letter, write an email, is to actually read this letter to the person. Um, with COVID right now, you know, a lot of us aren't meeting with our family and friends, so this can be done over a Zoom call. And I know you've written a letter it, and you actually haven't even maybe sent it off yet. And just the exercise of writing that letter is ridiculously therapeutic. Um, studies, because we always go back to science, right? Even though gratitude has been seen as a virtue from the East and the West for thousands and thousands of years, over the past 20 years, the research has just exploded. And with this letter, they've done studies and they, they, it shows that for an entire month after this exercise, your happiness level is increased. And it maintains that way for about a month. And then after a month, it can start to diminish. So then you just find something else or someone else you're grateful for and rewrite that letter. So although it does take a little bit of time, if you, you think about that, this person that has really impacted your life. Maybe that you haven't had an opportunity to think and literally list down what they did for you. I wrote my letter to um, one of my professors in college who became a mentor who literally without him, I don't know if I would be where I am today. It's that serious sometimes. When you really start thinking about it, you realize, wow, these people that have come in my life, if, if they, they hadn't have, where would I be? Um, and, and when you start to write that down, and you write a letter and you send it off to them, you do get that warm, fuzzy feeling. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, at least I did. I got that warm, fuzzy feeling. It evokes a lot of emotions, but it just sets your brain up to, what is the, the quote? Well, that fire together, together, wire together. Exactly, so you just, you write this letter and you would be amazed at the neurons that are firing and start to wire together and you get in that habit. You create a habit of gratitude, you create an attitude of gratitude, and just watch your life, right, change before your eyes. Your perspective is so important. Um, and if you can create a perspective of gratitude, um, I think that the benefits are obvious, maybe a little bit later. Yeah, the I, have to, I have to admit, the letter is a little too cheesy emotional for me. But I can write it. I don't know if I'm going to read it to the person, but I can definitely write it. And I think that alone, you know, to your point, it does still, you know, have a happiness effect. Um, but there's some, and the person who receives that letter, they probably have no idea. 
impact. Oh my god! Yeah, you know, I'm a big crier, so it doesn't take a lot for me to get emotional. <laughs> That's funny. Is there any other um, practices that you would recommend for folks? Letter, the jar? Yeah, I think I think journaling and going back to journaling, I think that all these practices, one thing that they have in common is that you're taking a piece of, you know, you're taking a pen to paper and you're actually writing um, some of your thoughts about what you're happy about today. You know, I'm, I'm actually happy for the cold because it's something I don't experience on a day to day on the West Coast. So I am saturated in 30 degrees and I have my fuzzy socks on and I'm, I'm warm and happy right now. But, you know, it's, it's, it's taking that moment to smell the roses and slow down and recognize uh, how lo lucky we are to have certain things or, you know, have the freedom to work from home or, you know, whatever it may be, our family and, you know, have loved ones, whether it's on Zoom calls or not. I'm going to do a Zoom call with my college girlfriends, I think, this weekend at some point. And I'm really excited. I'm excited to see everyone's face and their kids and, um, you know, just the season. <laughs> but, right. I'm grateful for technology that we even have the ability to, to do this, yeah. right? Another thing, too, um, that just popped in my head is meditation, a guided meditation. And I know we have one on the website that's a gratitude meditation. And so if it's kind of hard for you to get into that mindset, you know, sometimes guided meditations will help. They kind of provoke you and your mind to start thinking um, in, in grateful ways. So feel free to check that out on our website as well if you, if you need a little boost to get you in that mindset. And, and try gratitude meditation and, and see how that works. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ashley, for talking with me today about gratitude. Yeah, and we'll be here after the new year, right? On Fridays to I think maybe we'll talk about connection and the importance of as we go into twenty twenty one. Yeah. Sounds good. Well happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'll hopefully see you in person sooner than later. So. <laughs> All right, you Me take too. care. Bye.